Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, this is the third video I've started today. I'm building up videos so that there um, are days when I don't need to film and I'll have like a little backlog. I like doing that now and again. And I'm trying to think of different things. And one thing I did think of is as I started to water, I thought, what about a shelf at a time type thing? Um, it won't work for all the shelves because of what's on them, but these are the little ones. Yeah, I mean, this isn't a little one, it's up here so that I can see it, but um, you know, there's quite an assortment on this shelf and they hardly ever get filmed because they're little ones. So I thought we'd have a look at these as I get them down and water them and spread them out on the table. Right, the first one is, um, this is a Latoria type, Dendrobium Nora Tokanaga, crossed with Aberans, so it's a good mix. Um, relatively young plant, but nonetheless, we had a mishap. That new growth aborted. Um, I have no idea why. Um, nonetheless, this was um, one of the plants out of the big box, and... Um, Quite honestly, both of those larger canes are capable of blooming, and I do believe they're about to. If you look at the set, hang on, let's make sure I'm in focus here because I'm wobbling. Let's put the thing down. Once it stops wobbling, I can film it. Um, that is definitely a spike. So that cane is going to bloom, and so is that one. So I've got two canes on there producing a spike. Now, they do occasionally produce multiple spikes, but um, as I say, this is a relatively young plant, um, but two spikes ready to go. Very pleased with that. As I say, that um, the plants came out of the big box in various states of, you know, play. <laughs> Some were rootless, um, a few had cold damage, the Oncidium types in the box all died. They all got severely chilled to the point where they didn't make it. They, were, they weren't in the box too long, but you know they were in sub-zero temperatures. Some of them took no notice of it at all, and some of them were a surprise that they managed to survive. I was surprised. But um, you know these, quite honestly, Latorias shouldn't get cold, but it made it, and it's about to bloom. So I'm pleased with that one. That's coming on nicely. What the hell happened to that new growth? I really don't know. It's a while ago now. That's not a recent thing. But, you know, obviously I'm now waiting for another new growth because I've lost that one. And, um, yeah, coming on slowly but surely. But at least we get some blooms down the line. Now, this is the piece I kept of a weird dendrobium. And by weird, I mean its growth pattern. Um... It had canes, like most dendrobiums, it's uh, classed as a nobly type, and it grew some kikis. And I took some of them off and most of them died. So it grew some more kikis. It grew some kikis out of the stump where the old kiki came off. And those kikis grew on because I left them on the plant. And then out of the base of those kikis grew some more kikis. And that plant refused to put any new canes up from the base over the years I had it. Now it's with somebody else now, it was one of the ones in the big 4000 giveaway draw, I think Isabel had that one, and her plan was to take the clusters of kikis off and plant them separately, but whether she's done that or not we don't know. Um, but this is one kiki that I kept, I thought, <clears throat> right, I'm going to have one more go, I'll put a kiki in a pot, if it grows from the base it can stay. Well, it's decided to grow from the base, and that is... Lovely Virgin Variety Angel. It does have nice blooms if I ever get them again. But um, it's, quite, it's been a struggle, that plant. But at least it's, it's growing something from the base. <laughs> so, so it must have some of that Stardust Firebird in it, Kiki machine, and just doesn't like pushing out new growths from the base. Anyway, it's coming on now. Now this is a strange one. Um, this is a Zygopetalum cross, Zygonicea. Ooh, Murasaki, Kamadu, dark blue, French spelling blue, bleu. Um, <laughs> sounds like you've just tasted something horrible, doesn't it? Bleu. <laughs> uh, anyway, this came out of the big box, and I really was surprised that this stood the cold. Very surprised. Um, 
<laughs> amazed in fact. But nonetheless, it did look a little bit sorry for itself here, this growth. Uh, that's never really done anything since I got it. Um, this growth kept its leaves and it has a little bulb, but it does have another nice new growth coming on now. That's relatively recent and as a consequence it's now pushing out a little root system. It did have a few roots. Um, I haven't repotted that one yet because it hadn't long been done. Um, but all I can say with that is it's growing. Um, um, we'll have to see what happens. I don't. I haven't got a clue how big that needs to get before it's going to bloom. It could be years away, but um, at least it's got a new growth and some roots. So, coming on. Now, when I arranged with um, Ronja to do some swapsies, um, I was after the um, BC Make Eight um, because I lost mine some time ago, and she said I've got a nice plant. Do you want to swap that for some other things? And I said, oh, yes, please. And I promptly received my version of the Swapsies, which I've still yet to reciprocate. I'll apologise again, but I'm not posting plants, especially with the sort of plants that Ronja wants, Ristrepias, in this heat. <laughs> so until the weather breaks, they're on hold. They won't make it. Shut away in a box in this heat, they're not going to make it. It's not worth the effort. But this little bulb of filum was thrown in um, with the make -ay. And it is Tingaburinium. And <laughs> that's a spike. That was not there last time I'm look I looked, I'm sure. It's also got a mealy bug on it. We'll have that. Come off. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I, I put it in a pot. Um, it, it's grown some roots. Um, it looks reasonably happy in there. But it's happy enough to push out a spike. Very tiny, I don't know how big that's going to get, but with a um, stem that big, those are not going to be large blooms because they would just bend over. But at least I get to see what that one's like. And I do have a clue because I've seen pictures and I liked it. And quite honestly, it was um, one of the ones that was mentally on my wish list. As bulbar films go, relatively short rhizomes, it should stay in its pot and very, very attractive, all those small blooms that don't stink the place out. So as bulbar films go, I quite like that one. And a sneaky spike just appeared out of nowhere. That's good. Now this is the aforementioned Stardust Firebird. And um, this is the plant that was out of the big box. My own plant I've dumped. Um, it just wasn't growing well. And I thought, I don't need two. And this plant is growing reasonably well from the base. It's going to take a while to um, get going as such and grow vigorously because it didn't have a very good root system. Um, it's a shame actually because it had been potted in very good quality bark, but it was giant bark. So that the roots were like in air and I, I just couldn't keep them hydrated. So I've potted them up in something that's hopefully a bit more suitable to a youngish plant that's establishing a root system. So it's just small bark and a bit of moss. And um, once those roots get going a bit better, it should start growing a bit more vigorously. I do love the blooms. Um, it's just not a plant that's ever done well for me. So we'll see how this one does. It's um, classed as a nobly type, but there's only a tiny amount of nobly in it. It's got more unicum in it than anything, I think. Anyway, it's coming on. Now these are two Harveyanum, Dendrobium Harveyanum kikis that um, they were taken off, put in root tips in water for a while and um, they probably would have been sent to uh, the person they're going to as they were but because of the heat wave I thought well, I'll actually get these potted and see if I can get the roots going a bit better before they get posted off um, but there are signs of roots pushing out to the edge of the pot now so the, the I mean they had roots don't get me wrong even though they're kikis but um, sometimes Kikis just stall, and even though they've got roots, they just stop growing for a while. Well, this one looks like its roots are starting to extend, and once that happens, then they're growing, basically. Um, obviously waiting for new growths, but um, that might not be till next year. But as long as these are, have a good root system, the new growths will come. How on earth this little Cycopsis survived that cold, I really don't know. Uh, initially I thought it had cold damage but um, was reliably told 
this is what the plant looked like when it left. But it does hide a little secret round here. It has got a nice new growth coming up underneath. Let's turn it over. Yeah, so it has started a new growth. It's got some roots and it is growing some more up round the uh, top of the plant. Um, I'm reluctant to disturb it at the moment because what it's in it hasn't been in too long and it doesn't smell or anything, it's perfectly sound and these have a reputation of not liking root disturbance but others say rather than let the media go bad you're better off disturbing the roots <laughs> just get on with it, <laughs> it's better for the plant um, I'm on the fence, I haven't got enough of them or done it enough times to make a judgement really but um, I always say if the media's going off get the plant out of it, get it in something good and hopefully save it because if you lose your root system something like a psychopsis will take a bit of recovering because they're, they're relatively slow growers. If you give them the right conditions they do actually get going a bit but those right conditions are hot steamy jungle type things you know where you've got incredibly high humidity, some air movement and heat. They don't need a lot of light but um, Anyway, it's growing. <laughs> Good. It's actually, um, I presume that would be classed as a primary cross. It's Psychopsis butterfly and Papilio is a species and with a name and a small letter at the front, I presume Sandrae is also a species of Psychopsis. So that would be classed as a primary cross. But it's growing a new growth. I'm well pleased. Um, Psychopsis blooms are some of my favorites. They're, they're alien-like. Um, butterfly like they've got so many traits that I really like um, their only downside is the length of the flower spike the stem <laughs> which can be enormous and is prone to getting bashed around as a consequence but worth taking care of anyway um, possibly a youngish plant because certainly um, Papilio grows much bigger leaves than that the other one I don't know if the other one's more of a miniature then the leaves in theory would be halfway yeah it's only a guess, it doesn't always happen, um, but you can usually take the two traits of a primary cross and average them and you'll, get, you'll be somewhere near it. But new growth coming, that's good. And survive the cold, which I'm just amazed. Now my two little Neo Finesha's, I won't say either of these are doing that well. They're not going down, they're not doing that well. Um, this one bloomed not that long ago, nice variegated leaves on it, um, and it is growing some roots. I'm just wondering whether that moss has gone. Um, I'd like to plant these properly, um, you know, whereby uh, you get like a tiny little um, open mesh basket or something to make a mound and then put the moss over the top of that and make a bigger mound spread the plant over the top of that and then wrap the long strands of mice round, uh, mice, <laughs> moss around that. No, we don't want to wrap mice around it, do we? Um, I'd like to do them properly in the traditional manner, but um, it's getting round to it. But this moss does look a bit old now. I'll have to check my records. It may just need refreshing. Um, again, not a good idea to do it in this heat, but better not to wait too long. Um, I'll have a go at pronouncing these. Higashidi Miyako. <laughs> As I said, it's tag day, and the last two letters have been missing off of that tag for ages. So I've just written them in, starting. <laughs> Anything without a tag that's staying. And this one is Fuju Yumaro. Both Japanese names, obviously, these come from Japan. Nicknamed the Samurai Orchid or the Wind Orchid, I believe. Um, anyway, they're not doing brilliantly, but not dead yet. But I do believe they need some fresh media. I um, don't know whether to get on and do that. Uh, debating. I'll leave them for now because of the, you know, the, the, the transferring medias in adverse conditions gives you like a double whammy, a double shock status sort of thing so it might be better to just wait till this weather eases off a bit and we'll see how we go but the leaves aren't looking so good on this little miniature um, so I need to do something or I may lose it it's never bloomed it's, it's just a, a plant that's just not done well for me since I got it quite honestly this one has grown and put up new fans and it maintains its variegation so it, it's sort of okay but I wouldn't say it's growing vigorously 
And they're not exactly a fast grower at the best of times, but um, it could, they both could be doing better than they are. Well, I did say it was tag time. Boy, that's just taken a while. Um, I had to dig back into really old emails from when um, Beatrix sent the box. And I obviously filmed them at some point, and some of them I didn't know their IDs. And she sent me an email with descriptions, which I've just had to go and dig out. Uh, it took a while. Anyway, um... Most of the others I'll do from memory now from that email, but this, this one I just really didn't know. Um, it has a nice new growth pushing out, and that's a recent thing, and apparently it's Dendrobium Jarek Firehorn Brownie. Um, but there's a question mark on the end of that. Beatrix wasn't sure. Um, I would imagine that's a fair way off blooming, but um, maybe when one day there may be some blooms, um, we'll find out. But with a name like Firehorn, I would suggest we've got orange, but possibly with brownish tinges, so maybe autumn type colours if we ever get any. Anyway, um, new growth, that's progress. Now these are the uh, Dendrobium Hercoglossum Kikis that uh, have been recently repotted. Um, repotted recently enough that there's no point in looking for um, extensive root growth or anything yet. They've only recently gone in the pot. Um, but leaves haven't wilted or yellowed or anything and they did have good roots on them. Um, so I see no reason why they shouldn't get going now. It's another pot full of... Um, that one's quite a popular plant in here anyway, the Dendrobium Hercoglossum, so that's a pot full of those for somebody else. Well, this one I've only recently uh, had identified, a viewer identified it for me because they thought they'd seen some at Burnham's that looked exactly the same. So I sort of did a bit of uh, looking up and um, yeah, I agree. Uh, it is Sarcochilus hartmannii. Uh, you know, 99% certain anyway. Um, might be another species, but it's certainly that type of plant. Um, strictly speaking, more like a vandaceous plant than any other type, so I was dubious about what to do with it. It's in quite chunky barks. There's an awful lot of air around those roots because I split the difference. Quite a few of these turned up round shows during this year that I hadn't seen before. Flowers are quite attractive, not large, but attractive, and they seem to be multi-floral. Um, but all the ones I saw were in pots. Um, none of them were either mounted or bare-rooted, so um, I've split the difference and put it in a pot, but, but with airy mix and we'll see how it does. It, it, um, it has grown that new leaf and it's growing a new one now and it has pushed out a couple of new roots um, this season. Um, these don't grow huge before they get to flowering size but uh, we'll have to see how that one goes. As I said, we just found out what it is. Now this is my little Dendrobium rhodostictum. The older part of the plant has not been doing very well. Um, uh, this was the first cane to bloom um, I think that just had a single bloom. Um, this one then bloomed, so it has bloomed okay. And then it just seemed to stall for a while, but um, recently it's pushed up this new growth. That should bloom okay. And I've just noticed at the base, the base is splitting, so there's going to be another new growth. And at the base of that new growth, it's pushing out new roots. So it should pick up a bit now. Um, it may have been that on such a young plant with so few canes that perhaps I shouldn't have let it bloom and it's um, taken the strength because if you look how badly shriveled these bulbous parts are compared with the new one, they've lost all their energy. Yeah, So I think maybe I shouldn't have let it bloom on such a small plant. Um, didn't have a brilliant root system, is it? Uh, but this growth pushed on nicely. It's got three leaves as opposed to two leaves on all the others, so that's an improvement. The sheath's formed at the top, so it's probably going to bloom, and um, it is starting yet another new growth along with roots. So I think it should pull on now. Um, but yeah, it hasn't been doing so well recently, even though it was blooming. I think it was one of those perhaps I shouldn't have let it bloom. But anyway, it's coming on now. And then we've got the uh, Dendrobium Comet King Kiki with a massive bloom on it. 
<laughs> in comparison to the size of the Kiki, that is a large bloom. I love Comet King out of the nobly types. I do like that one. Um, it's the fact that the leaves, and, uh, the petals and sepals aren't plain. They do have veining on them. That just gives them a little bit more of an attractiveness to me. And the nice yellow in the centre. Um, this was a Kiki from Rachel. Um, a while ago now, but it did produce a new growth last year, <laughs> which, which is now decided to bloom. And I'm hoping to get another new growth soon, um, possibly after that bloom drops. But um, it's got some roots and um, it will pull on, um, hoping to grow that into a nice big mature plant over the years as time goes on. And this was another one out of the big box from uh, Beatrix. This is Dendrobium macrophyllum and its variety Turnitensi. Now this has pushed up quite a few new growths recently. Got two, two here pushing on. Um, another nice one here. And there are associated uh, new roots coming out with those new growths. So this plant's pulling on quite nicely now. Um, certainly wasn't a bad plant when I got it, um, but it is sort of pushing on now, there's another new growth here actually, so there's two there and two round the other side. This one's quite new. So it, it's growing reasonably well and it's now starting a root system to go with those new growths so it should start filling the pot up a bit better. Um, coming on nicely that one. Oh. And the only other one that lives up on this shelf, um, these um, Pinguiculas just get dotted around as and when. I just put them somewhere where they're not in my way temporarily. Um, I've still got to water this one, but there's no room left on the table. So even though they're little ones, they do fill the table up. Um, this is a primary cross. This is in Fundy Bullum cross with Lowii. Long lasting, very attractive, pure white blooms. Um, if you like dendrobiums and you come across the species in Fundy Bullum, I would recommend you grab it because they are quite easy to grow. They're the black hair type. Um, so continuous growers in effect, although they do slow down a bit in the winter time. Um, reliable blooming and um, on, on the species in Fundy Bullum, once the plant gets to a reasonable size, you will get quite a few more than two blooms at the apex, um, up, up to sort of four or five. And they're larger. The actual species in Fundy Bullum blooms are larger than this. They've still got the pure white, slightly different coloured yellow in the, in the throat and on the lip, but um, well worth getting that species if you can get hold of it. Don't be frightened of species. Some of them, quite honestly, are easier than some of the hybrids. But if you come across Infundi Bullum, I'd recommend you get it. If I, if I ever see the species, I'll get it, even though I've got two primary crosses with that in it. I'd still get the species if I found it. I haven't come across it yet. Okay, so that's that's just a, a video of the little ones. Many of those were from Beatrix out of the box that survived the big freeze. And um, most of those are coming on. A few of those were mine as well. But they're just, they just live on this shelf because they're all in small pots. And I can get an awful lot on this shelf where they get pretty good light. Um, they're in direct line of fire of uh, one of the circulating fans. So they've always got good air movement on them. And... Um, because they're all on that shelf, they don't get bashed around because the only time I go near that shelf is when I water them. So I don't lean over them or try and squeeze plants out between other plants. They get all done together, like I've just done. So that's that little lot. Um, quite a variety in amongst those, if you think about it. It's a good smattering of dendrobiums. Um, a zygopetalum cross, a psychopsis. Um, some neophenesias, even a bulbophyllum with a spike on it. So, but you know, majority of these are either dendrobium kikis or young plants to pull on. So, uh, yeah, that's that lot. See you next time.